Exercise 2. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality with, with revo uh, Revolve features inside Inventor 2012. So let's begin with the new part file. Uh, before we do that, actually take a look. One of the main ingredients with a Revolve feature is an axis of revolution, which could be make it made up of a center line or an edge of the part. So we start with the new part file. Again, it starts us on the front plane, so we're in good shape. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to draw some center lines. Now, we select the line tool, but then we have to go over here to the right and find the center line icon. Make sure you select that, so they're both used in conjunction. Glide up to the origin, click and drag out a vertical line about maybe an inch and a quarter high, approximately. You could hit escape, or actually uh, we could end the chain, and then make sure you just draw a horizontal line. And then if you right click, you could actually uh, select done, or you could hit escape. Now that we have the two center lines in place, we could go ahead and just click on the line tool by itself and make sure we turn off, if it's still turned on, the centerline tool. And glide up to the horizontal centerline. And you want to make sure you're a little bit of a distance away from the vertical centerline as you click and drag up about a half inch or so line. It should be vertical. Just click again and then drag out a little line here. This is going to be about 0.4 approximately. And then draw the angled line. Now the angle, you don't really have to worry too much what, what you're getting there, 118, 116, whatever it might be. Just go ahead and drag it out. And don't connect it though to the horizontal line. Drag out a little line here and click. Drag up a vertical line, a short little horizontal and another vertical line connecting it to the center line. And hit escape. Now what we want to do here is we want to mirror this across. So we could actually just click and drag a fence surrounding the green geometry. Find the mirror tool. And then click here for a mirror line and select the horizontal line. Now it should go back to select, and uh, apparently you have to select this after the fact. And surround that geometry. So make sure, in this case actually, I want to go through and go to the mirror tool. Make sure select is on. Hold control and just select all the lines that are green. Then click on mirror line and select the horizontal center line and then hit apply. And then hit done. Now that everything's mirrored over, we want to go ahead and add some dimensions to it. So let's go ahead and click on dimension. And in this case, we want to make sure you look at the print that is provided. Let me zoom up here a little bit so you can see it. And essentially, we see that we start, we're going to start from the center and work our way out, adding these dimensions. So we have a 0.75, 0.4, 18 degrees, 2. So we could go ahead and make sure dimension selected, select the vertical line here, and then the center line, and drag it across the opposite side of the center line. Otherwise, it, uh, in this case, we do want to get a diameter dimension. So click and go ahead and type in 0.75. Now it may look like things are getting tied up in a little bit of a knot there, that's okay. Because what we could do if we hit escape, we're actually able to go in here and grab that geometry and kind of move it around so it's not in a knot. And maybe pull the, drag these things out a bit further so they're not interlocking into each other. Let's go ahead and go back to dimension. This is going to be 
0.4. Click on the angled line here and this vertical line and between the two drag it down make sure that's 18 degrees. Click on these two lines and between the two it should be 0.25 as long as these aren't intersecting each other, they're very close, but we're okay. Just click on both lines and make that 0.25 as well. To finish it off, just to mention this vertical line on the far left to the vertical center line, drag it to the right and make sure that's 5 inches. And then it's not a bad idea to lay the dimensions out, how you'd like to see them on a print. So it's a nice, clean way to ensure that it's going to look halfway decent later on because you can use dimensions later on. And actually most CAD packages nowadays, the way you lay them out in the 3D solid. Let's go ahead and add a couple more dimensions here. I'm going to go ahead and add from this vertex here, from the end point, Make sure you select point if you get the filter that appears. To the center line. And that's going to be three inches. Actually, yeah, that is two inches. And then go ahead and this dimension here between both of these green lines is going to be two inches as well. Everything should turn blue to indicate it's fully defined. You can hit escape to get out of dimension tool and again lay the dimensions out how you'd like to see them if they were going to be put into a drawing. And it should look something like that. Hit the finish sketch tool and now find the revolve feature. Click on revolve and it may or may not pick up on the vertical center line. In this case, it did automatically. Otherwise, you could go over here and click on Axis and select the center line if you don't see this nice preview. In this case, we want a full revolve, 360 degrees, which it's defaulting to, so we could just hit OK. Again, if you go to View, you have some visual style options shaded with edges. might might be helpful for the next thing, which are fillets that we're going to put in. Now, for the fillets, make sure we go back to Model, and you'll find the Fillet tool. Select Fillet, and the size of the fillets that we want to go with are going to be point 0.1. So go back and make sure that the is set to a constant of point 0.1. And you could go ahead and select this edge here this edge right there, the edge of the bottom along with the inside bottom. You can rotate if you need to by holding shift and the middle mouse button to get the underside. And then hit OK. And then this scroll button on your mouse will let you zoom in or out dynamically. And then to save this, just go to the eye up in the upper left, the upper eye pro, click on it, go to save, and we will name this E2. And that completes exercise two.